Hi everyone and welcome to the brand new Ballers in God podcast. Yes, brand it's new. been brand new. Brand new man, brand new. Come on now, fresh 2020. Fresh Two. for you guys. 2022. Oh, yeah, 2022. <laughs> Yo, this is how this is how mad it's been this last couple of years, but we've made it through. We're here. Amen. Brand new content for you guys. So thank you so much for everyone who's who's demanded, who's requested, who's really want to see this we've decided to to come and bring it to you. For those who don't know who I am, my name is KJ. Um, I'm a videographer from Birmingham. Also do uh, football content, football co- podcasting um, as well on YouTube. So I'm grateful for to be here right now. And obviously the man next to me is the co-host of the podcast. Uh, but there's so much more we can say about him. He's, he's not only just the creator um, founder of Ballers in God. He is also the best footballer that Doncaster has ever seen. You know what I'm saying? He is a leader of the men around him. Excellent father and wonderful husband. And more, most importantly, man of God. It is John Bostock, people. You know what I'm saying? He is here with us today. I want to give the round of applause that they're giving you right now. You know what I'm wow. saying? <laughs> Wow, some intro, bro. Some intro. Nah, it's 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 an it's an absolute pleasure to to finally kick this off. You know, the people have 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 I've asked, and we're just passionate about producing some amazing content for you guys. Um, and so as we kick off the Ball and God podcast, I consider it a huge honor to be the first official guest. So, yeah, thanks for the intro, KJ. No problem, man. It, it, and it had to be. It had to be you. You know, what I mean, like uh, I think it's the only best way to start something off is, is getting the man himself who whose vision has not just only started something new but it's helped so many people um around the world uh with 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 your platform it's given footballers a space where they are free and and open to express their faith to d- discover their faith go deep in their faith so it's only right that that you've got the chance to just be the guest because i know we're going to be hosting you want to be That's asking a load of questions with yeah, yeah. different people, so here's your chance just to relax and be the subject of uh, uh and be the guest and, and have the spotlight where you deserve. Um, so yeah, man, I'm looking forward to this uh, to this part and the ones uh, in the future. But to start off, I'm just gonna ask festive period, Christmas, New Year's 2022's arrived. How was it, John? How was that for you? Chilled chilled normally for me christmas is the most i've got there's been a habit in my life obviously when you're playing abroad you get the christmas break Mm. but since i've been playing back in england i've realized that over the christmas period i normally get ill and i don't speak over my life because obviously the lord is is my healer and but christmas time is normally the busiest time of the year busiest time of the year for me Family mm. runs, playing games, it's just draining. But this time he said, you know what, let's take it down low key. Mm. Um, and we just had a really quiet one at home with the family, um, trying to spend time focusing on the real reason mm. of the season, which which often gets missed out, um, the yeah. Lord. Um, but I'm injured at the moment. I'm recovering from my first ever and last ever surgery. Um, oh, oh, man, yeah. Man, so yeah, um, yeah. I had surgery uh, end of November, and mm. so they said I've got ten to twelve weeks to recover. So I'm out of the boot now. I'm doing bike sessions. I'm up and about. So it's been a slow start to mm. the year, but I'm glad. I'm yeah, glad. I, I feel you. And and it, just a quick one on the injury. Like I know these things can impact footballers, like like mentally, emotionally, a lot. And uh, but for you, has it been more of a time of reflection and and refocus could you did you have you used it in a way where it's like actually let me not dwell on the the injury but let me use this time to maybe look at things maybe maybe been missing in my life and mm. refocus on that i mean this is this is this is our podcast so i'm going to be as open and real as i want which is amazing because you know sometimes when you do podcasts and different things yeah like yeah you say, i'm gonna be real i felt like god was telling me for a long time to slow down Mm. And I didn't listen, like ministry, ballers in God, uh, other things and ventures I'm working on, obviously my career and just been part of a church plant. I have just been so busy. And there's a danger that you can become too busy and actually miss out on the most important thing, the Lord. 
um, you can do so much for him, but you can miss out doing stuff with him, actually knowing him. Mm. And I felt the Lord kind of telling me to slow down. And I didn't really listen. Um, and then the injury happened. And so I'm not saying God injures anyone because that's not, yeah. those things aren't from God. But when the injury happened, I was like, all right, I've literally got 12 weeks here to kind of re push, push the reset button um, and use this time to, so when I come back, stuff's in order. There's some structure. Yeah. Uh, there's some priorities that are non-negotiables. So um, I've definitely used the time wisely um, in that sense. I'm also working on a few things that will be revealed to the board and the God community, hopefully soon. Uh, you hear <laughs> hey! that, people? Hey, you hear that, people? Trust me. Trust pipeline, me. Pipeline. Pipeline. Things pipeline. are in it. It's coming. So no, but um, the scriptures say that God works all things together for the good of those who love him mm. and for those who are called according to his purpose. I hate being injured. <laughs> all players hate being injured. But we have to realize that God will use it will use it and for my good and for his glory so back with a bang soon come hey, come on now I'm, I'm john when you come back listen i have no business watching doncaster rivers i'm a man united fan myself but when you come back man's gonna find a way to get them highlights to get them to get them footage i don't i need to see you on the pitch I need to see those 40 yarders 30 oh, yards bro, listen, man, we, we've been struggling man doncaster it's been <laughs> this season, everything that could possibly go wrong in it for a club's mm. gone wrong, you know. And so we've had crazy injuries, about four, five, six surgeries. It's just been a lot going on. Mm. The bottom of the league at the moment. But I'm hoping that yeah. that will change. Yeah, that's the question. Do you do you pray for safety? Are you are you there praying that Doncaster do something, find us next kind of strength to make it the greatest escape? Or is it one of those things where you're like, actually, it your will will be done. So if we go down, we go down. We go down. Nah, you know what? Nah, nah. My, 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 nah. You know what? I've realized, like, I've experienced one relegation in my career. I, I was mm. playing for Leuven in Belgium. We got promoted mm. with them. Had one year in the Premier in Belgium and we got relegated. But we played yeah. great football, but we just we didn't get enough points. Um, mm. And it was awful, man. Like, when you're in the stadium and you're playing mm. in the last game and you're playing to stay up and you, you didn't stay up, oh, you just felt the weight of the fans. I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm balling. I was crying my eyes out. Um, oh, so man. I don't want, I don't want my, my club, my fans, yeah, staff to experience a relegation. So we need a massive second half of the season. Yeah. Um, ultimately, we have to pray, Lord, you will be done. But at mm. the same time. We have to also make our desires known to the Lord. There's no way mm. I want to have another relegation on my CV. Yeah, no, I, I hear that. I hear that, and yeah, that that that's probably sometimes where I've seen, fully enough, some of the greatest kind of strength from footballers. If you if you really look at them as just more than just players, you know what I mean. More than players is one of the categories. If you look at them more than players, the relegation battle, the relegation fight. I've seen some teams, some players find a next kind of strength to come through and and to be fair it, it's quite actually it's quite inspiring to see i remember years of wigan just yeah. fight i don't know they'll be down in the dumps and i don't know found where from last 10 weeks Probably boom something new sunderland same thing so in in the face of adversity there's always new strength and there's always new uh um, newer chance to find that courage to find that next level and uh i hope uh, Doncaster does that because I've got uh, a couple of people who are close to contact Doncaster. I've got a friend who um, who supports the club very passionately, does content with the with the club. So I, I hope I hope the best for for you guys in the rest yeah, of your season. Uh, no problem. Man. But a uh, question for you: This platform mm -hmm. is 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 taking over, man. Slowly but surely, it's taking over. I, I remember when I followed the platform. I think early. 2020 i was just like what i was like ballers in god like footballers who are actually professing jesus professing christ like i've not seen that as as a young man myself who's, who's grown up christian for most of my life i have not really seen that i've heard of footballers being christian and they do they may practice in their own time but i've never seen a platform where they're just like yeah like this is us um so that was inspiring to me and and then seeing you on on there um doing your q and a's and 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 your and doing your little words and the little videos from all the footballers i was just kind of like 
this this is amazing <laughs> you know what i mean this is amazing and so uh we're here now and my my question would be is what what led you to create boys and god what what was it that that inspired you to to create such a platform so i became a christian when i was and bro thank you so much for sharing that like how mm-hmm. you was impressed and um yeah kind of taken back at, at, at what you saw when you followed i think mm-hmm. a lot of people when they follow they are really um almost surprised to see so many mm-hmm. footballers vocal about their faith mm-hmm. and unashamed almost so take it back i gave my life to jesus when i was 16 didn't grow up in a christian household at all um and so my whole life was built upon me as a footballer right yeah my identity was built upon it like I was John Bossop, the footballer. When I came to know Jesus, I realized that, no, I'm a Christian who plays football now. Mm. And so my gift was now to be used in a way that glorified God rather than glorified my own self or my own, yeah. you know, uh, desires. And so God took me on a journey out of my comfort zone to realize that. And it wasn't comfortable. Um, mm. And I do believe if a man belongs to God, God will break that man into a million pieces and then remold him to look mm. like Christ. And the breaking is not, it's not, yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's not comfortable. Man. Nah. So I was actually, um, I was, I was, I left Spurs. I got, I got my contract um, expired at Spurs. I was 21 mm. years old. My confidence was so low, KJ. Uh, KJ. Uh, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if you want me to finish football now and become a full time minister, like, like, serve you. Yo, like, you was, you was ready. Ministry. You was ready to yeah. do that. Ah, yo. I said, I said Lord, Tell me now, because my confidence is so done. And the, I'll never forget, bro, the Lord spoke to me so clearly. I didn't hear his voice mm. audibly, but I felt the Lord say, now you're ready. Mm. Do it for me. And I was like, what do you mean now I'm ready? I've been praying. I've been fasting. <laughs> like, what do you mean now? Yeah. And, and I felt the Holy Spirit comfort me in that, John, like, you're finally willing to let go of the one thing you were never willing to let go of, like mm. football. But the fact I was willing to let go of it, the Lord said, now you're ready. So I left Spurs, went to the second division in Belgium. And I just played for freedom, KJ. Mm. Like, I just played and realized, what well, I've got is a gift. Let's not make it about the politics, about this and that. And yeah. just play. It's the first season I played maybe t- more than 12 games, 21 years old at the time. And my career just kind of started to take off. But then I moved to another club in Belgium, Leuven, the club I mentioned before. Mm-hmm. And... I couldn't get to church on Sundays because of training. Yeah. I the language barrier was tough. And bro, I mm. just felt like I was struggling in my faith. I had my wife with me and stuff, so that was great. But I was thinking, if I'm struggling, there must be other players out there yeah. feeling the exact same way. So I've met some Christian players along my journey. So I've mm. called a couple of them. Um and actually before that, I prayed, I said, God, like I'm struggling. What do I do here? Because this is before the whole Zoom church age started. Yeah, 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 Everything yeah, yeah. is online. Yeah. Like my church in South London is a great church, but they weren't mm. really present online. So I couldn't really connect mm. whilst I was in Belgium. So I prayed, I said, God, what, what should I do? And I felt the Holy Spirit say, um, unite faith and football. I was like, okay. So didn't know where to start. And sometimes you just had to st- take that step out in faith. Yeah, you just got to do yeah, it. Yeah, so I called a couple of the players I knew who I've met on my journey of different clubs who believed in Jesus. And I called them, I said, bro, how are you? And the first thing they tried to explain was their career yeah bro football so no 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 not football how yeah. are you as mm. a man and it's like yeah bro like struggling to pray this and that oh yeah i'm struggling with this pornography da, da, da. so bro i get it i get it man but god's put this on my heart we should just start an online meeting just mm. just just come together and just just it's just vibes like no one knows what it's like to be a footballer other than footballers yeah that's true and so we came um i think four of us bro we had our first meeting in 2015 hey. aj KJ, it was like an earlier heaven, bro. It was unbelievable. We hey. laughed, we cried, we read the scriptures, we prayed. We had no plan. We let the Holy Spirit just kind of move. Mm. And I, from that first meeting, I thought, "Oof, Lord, what are you doing here, Lord? This is, mm. this is." I mean, it didn't have a name. It wasn't Ballers in God. Then it was just yeah. the meeting. So we met every month, but then players kept inviting other players. Word of mouth kept spreading, kept spreading, kept spreading. And I thought, all right, Lord, this is growing. We need to start meeting weekly. Then I was like, Lord, what's the name? I need a logo for this. And the Lord <laughs> gave me ballers in God. I was like, okay. Then I made the logo. And I think yeah. if people could look at the logo, they can see the 
B I G and also the three one six, which is John three sixty. When when I you don't understand, I saw <laughs> B I G for the longest time, and then it was one one of the wristbands that that um, that you have, and I was looking at it, it's like, wait, that could be a th- wait, that could be a three, and I was like, and then the, I was like John three sixty, and I was like, how have I not seen this? I was like, that you see that there, that that we love to see that, you know what I yeah, mean, like bro. two in one. Um, but that's but that's what yeah. the Lord does. He gives creativity, and like whenever he, mm-hmm. he he sets something off, he'll give the grace and the rest that will cause it to flourish. And so, we had that, and then bro, so we we meet in every week from in 2015, 2016, mm-hmm. bro. We started growing, started growing. We made a Twitter account, I think we started. Then we made an Instagram account a couple years later, but then we kept growing. Players from France, players from Belgium, players from Turkey, players from England, and the group grew so big. I said, no, we need to multiply. So mm-hmm. I. Had, Two guys who really got the vision, Aeon Eno, ex uh, Ajax player, Cameroon captain, and Jeffrey Sarpong, ex Ajax player, had an amazing career playing around the world. Mm. One speaks fluent French and one speaks fluent Dutch. I said, guys, we need to we need to have three language groups. Yeah, one English, one French, and one Dutch. And he said, John, I'm on it. We'd love to lead it. So hey. since we started in 2015 with four players, we now have around as of the start of 2022, around 300 players that we disciple, mentor, and we're connected to. Ooh, and we have meet, that's amazing. Uh, weekly meetings. Every morning, players pray from 7 to 7.30. We've got um, weekly um, Bible studies. We get special guests in. So Ballers in God is a disciple-making movement in the world of football, but it's also an evan- evangelistic movement that reaches mm. the masses. So if yeah. you follow the in- Instagram, you'll kind of get the content and be inspired and kind of see mm. what's going on but there's also behind the scenes discipleship going on with footballers so god's been faithful man um that's how we started at the yeah. beginning anyway yeah that, that that that's amazing like like the way that it's just that's just grown in this tape 300 plate like that is insane you know what i mean that's insane because it could have been very easy for a lot of players to be like Nah, I'm not really feeling it, or nah, do I really want to try? But they've they've st- they've stepped out as well, and they've they've found a home in in this too. So that's just amazing to hear. Three language groups as well, crazy, 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 yeah, crazy. God, crazy. God gets the glory, bro. And now I, I realize, and now I realize that when God said, "Now you're ready," this is all, bro. My journey, yeah, it's been so uncomfortable. Mm. Like, I would never have planned like my journey in football to have been as it's been, but now I realize because. God wanted to birth something like ballers and God through me. I had to go through these things. I had to be yeah. a wonder kid. I had to not have a club. I had to be almost willing to give up. I had to be clubless. I had to be... Yeah. So now when I'm mentoring players and encouraging them and counselling them, I know exactly what nearly all of them have been, been through. Do you, mm. know, do you know what I'm trying to say? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone watching this, like God's got a purpose for your pain and he's got a... There's a reason for what you're going through. He'll mm. turn it around. And when you're in the frame, it's hard to see the picture. But after time, God will make it very clear. Yeah, so so very keep clear. going. Hey, amen, man. Amen. We'll come, we'll come back. We'll come back to that wonder kid thing. Mm. I, I I need to chat about that. I'll come back to that very much. So but yeah, um, it's amazing that you've had a you've had a very uh very good career, played all around the world, um, seen some many places. And you're talking about um your Belgian club. How do you pronounce it again? Laverne? Leuven. Leuven, oh, Leuven. Out, out heavily Leuven. OHL for sure. Yeah. Hey, okay, nice, nice. I'm on your Wikipedia uh, page right now. <laughs> hey, uh, it's going to take you a while to scroll through my club, bro. It might be for the whole <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and um, Wikipedia is crazy because I don't know who does this, but they, they got information. Um, John Joseph Bostock. Um, yes, they got your middle name on there. Height. Playing everything, bro. What's the weight? One, thing... one time they got it wrong. What's the weight? Did they got the weight? Uh, the weight. The weight is. Oh, they took the weight away. Yeah, That's... one time. Did you complain? As... Yeah, the one time they put me down as so I'm about eighty four kilos. Yeah. Yeah. They put me down as sixty seven kilos. That's some like flyweight thing. No, that's not me. Hey <laughs> <laughs> man, you got any, some dead. dead, a, dead anyone anything. can educate. Uh, yeah. Educate, anyone can edit Wikipedia. That's why sometimes it's it's not accurate. Yeah, you gotta always make check. But there's one thing you that that showed Belgium's second division player of the season 2014, 2015 season. How did 
how was that? How did you feel getting that award? Um, because player of the season, you got how many players in that league playing mm-hmm. at the same time, and you you got that. How how did that feel? Yeah, it was amazing, bro. So I won the I won the player of the year award twice. I won it in Belgian second division and then in France second division with Lons. But the first one was it was really nice because I felt like I'd been suffering a lot in my career. Mm. And I took the massive sacrifice for me and my wife to go to Belgium, take a step down from England. Mm. And um it's funny actually, Leuven, so I left Tottenham. Not not many people know this story, yeah. I left Tottenham and I had no club. Swindon mm. were interested, but not really wanting me. I was thinking, you know what, let's go abroad. So I dyed my hair blonde for the first time, yeah? <laughs> like, just new start. Yeah. Went out to Belgium. Me and my agent were driving around, training with clubs, trialling. Mm. club called Ostend. I trained there. They liked me. Then I went to Antwerp with Jimmy Floyd Hustle Bank. He liked me. And this other club called Leuven let me come and train. So I drove. They were driving there. I'm driving to Leuven training ground. Bro, it was early in the morning. I tried to call them, they didn't pick up. So I fell asleep outside the training ground, me and my agent. Mm. My agent's calling, calling, calling. They said, okay, just come and train then. I was like, oh, attitude, man. So I went in there. They gave me a kit, put me in this room away from everyone. I said, can I get some breakfast, please? I haven't eaten. Like, they gave me like this some, like, bit of bread and banana. I was like, wow. No, 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 here, take this, take it. You know what I mean? And it's all you get. You're just like, Bro, oh, okay. I was hungry, man. This little humble breakfast, but okay. So... I just came back from injury, so I wasn't fully, fully fit, but technique should always kind of yeah. show through. So I'm training, train that day, then train well. Then the manager calls me into his office after. He said, what are you doing here? I said, what do you mean what am I doing here? He went, you're from Tottenham. How have you even found yourself in this position? I was like, what? Is this, what is he, is this what's he going on about? He said, if, he said, if I was you, I'd look in the mirror and slap myself and say, I shouldn't be in this position. I was like, okay. So me, I looked at my agent like, okay. He said, you know what? I can see you've got talent, but there's no place for you here. I was like, wow. So I signed for Anto of Hustle Bank, yeah? yeah. Hey, the whole season. That club Leuven, they was in the Prem. They got relegated. Manager got sacked. Who called me to try to, to who then called me to sign me in that transfer window? Leuven. The Wait. same club that rejected me, the place where they, the manager told me to sl- actually slap myself. Mm. They said, we want to sign you. So I signed for Leuven. That season, I scored 15 goals, 14 assists. Oof. Took us to, we got one promotion by the playoffs and our hey. player of the year. So for me, that really holds so much. Uh, mm. It was a sweet uh, individual accolade because yeah. the club that rejected me, I was now the the main man there. Yeah, and I was being, yeah, yeah. You know, it, was, it was the world could see. So but not, not a lot. Not a lot of people know that backstory, the fact that Yo, I, that's... I was put in this referee changing room by myself <laughs> before training. And then a year later, I'm, I'm, you know, captain or, you know, vice captain and playing and, and shining. So, yeah, Yo, God's good, man. That, that, that's amazing, bro. That's amazing. And obviously, we, we love to see our, our, our fellow brothers balling out, bro. You know what I mean? The, the, the GN... A, a lot of people... Okay. I'm in the football content creation world, so like I, I meet a lot of people with a lot of different opinions. And yeah. one of the big th- things right now is GA merchants, goals and assists. They don't mm. really count. It's about how you play. <laughs> da, 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 da. I test this and all of that. Just a quick one because there's a lot of debate around it. What what's your view on like and like goals and assists? Do you think it's a really important thing, or do you think it's actually knows all about how you perform? Uh, because obviously you got what's that 20 29 goals and assists in one season yeah. so you you've had you've had them so what what's your opinion on on, on that well i can't lie man. my 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 gna have have not been anointed for the last couple of seasons <laughs> <laughs> goals and assists but honestly i think i mean I, i've been a pro since i was well i've been playing men's professional football since i was 15 yeah i'm, tw- mm. I'm 30 now so football's changed bro the whole mm. culture the way that players look at people look at the game, how they evaluate, uh, how they review and evaluate yeah. successful players, it's changed. Long gone are the days where you've got Mavericks, uh, yeah, you've got players yeah. that just, you know, just play and bring joy to the game, and it's, people don't look at, oh yeah, but he doesn't do this or he doesn't get goals and assists. I think that's changed. Yeah, I, I preferred how it was. Mm. Yeah, like I've got like my goat 
is Ronaldinho. Now, of course, he got the goals and assists, but yeah. he bought way more than just stats. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. now football is so efficient. They mm. look at football. Football teams are like machines now, bro. They have yeah. to run on efficiency. What do you bring me? How many goals? What are you? What are you bringing a team? So I think you can't deny stats. Look yeah. at CR seven, Messi. You can't deny stats. But for me, football will always be more mm. than stats. And I think there's fans out there who hold dear to that that principle. Yeah. You know, Ronaldinho helped me to fall in love with the game like no one else. My mm. guy missed the penalty. He's still smiling like. <laughs> you know I mean? so, he could get away with that though. Like, oh, yeah. He could get away with it. He could get away with it. So I don't know. Um, football's a game of opinions for me. Yeah. When I see a player like Thiago Alcantara yeah. rolls the ball under his foot and just something, he doesn't maybe get the stats that another player could get, but yeah. I appreciate those things more than most. Oh, fair, fair. You hear it. You heard it here first, people. John Bostock is eye test over stats. <laughs> yeah, said it, I am. He said it. Yeah, I am. I am. I am. I am. You can't deny the stats. If I'm a manager, probably I'll be a bit different. But as a <laughs> as a fan, definitely. Yeah. Well, guys, in the comments after the after the pod, after you watched it, have that little conversation between you guys. Which one do you prefer? Which one's most important? We'd love to see your opinions on that. Um, let's 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 read it back a bit. Let's let's go back a bit. You're you're 16. Uh, professional footballer, just giving your life to Christ, and and you obviously you don't know what God has for you in your journey, but you you just said, Lord, just take me on it. Um, what would you say were one of the biggest, biggest kind of challenges, biggest things you had to come up against when being a young Christian man now, and you're also a professional footballer, the Wonder Kid tag, Spurs, and all these yeah. things are going for you. What was that like in your faith going uh, at a young age? So I didn't really know any Christian players older than me at the time. I, I was 15, 16, with Palace, Crystal Palace first team, obviously traveling to the away games. All the boys are watching the things that men mm. watch on the way, you know, on a bus mm. to the hotels and stuff. And I was part of that crew. I gave my life to Christ. The next day, they're watching their, what they want to watch. I'm, I've got my Bible out. And I'm 16, mm. with these older pros, 30, 31, 32. So they can't believe it, but that's just, it was all really for me, it was like a night to day conversion. Mm. I didn't know the Lord. I encountered Jesus. I was filled with the Holy Spirit and God put me back to, in the same environment where I was before. So it was very noticeable that I was different um, and people criticize you for it. They banter yeah. you. Mm. They, would, they would say things, you know, you're trying to stay pure. Oh, are you doing that? They, they, they would try and because people don't really understand what's happened and they could yeah. they could almost see the old John, not the new John. They mm. had questions. Um, but very quickly, I had to find my my roots in Christ and realize that, I mean, the scripture, one one verse that really helped me was in the word where it says, um, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. So Jesus said, so I yeah. realized that it's easy to hide and people ask you questions and to kind of just, uh, you know, mm. put them under the carpet. But, I realized that even from a young age, uh, God gave me a boldness. Yeah. So, um, it's, listen, don't get me wrong. It's, it comes with challenges, man. Temptation. You're still mm. in a world full of temptation. Um, but I think one thing that really helped me is that I was in a good church. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, bro, sleep on the fact that church is really important. Mm. You know, a Christian without a church is like a baby without a home. You mm -hmm. can grow, but you won't get the right nourishment and care that you need. So I had a great pastor. Um, and a good church and that helped me I think in my early days because I needed that ground grounding for sure mm, yeah that, that's amazing I understand what you, you you mean about that especially when people are looking at you like but you was this but uh, like two seconds ago like I had I did going uh going at school had uh, people ask me questions about one time it was in RE we was watching um I think it's the miracle maker, you know, the 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 Jesus story with the with the animated play doh and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So we was watching that and then we was watching the crucifixion, and I I'm I'm starting crying here. I'm here. I'm crying in class because obviously I'm seeing <laughs> like I don't understand like what's happening in You're this moment, touched. bro. You get attacked by then, the Holy Spirit, bro, in class. Right, and then <laughs> and then people looking at me like, why are you crying? Like, they're just like, why are you crying, bro? I'm just like. Fam, do you not do you not understand what's happening right here, fam? Like, like I'm just there. It's like you guys, like you don't get it, but but yeah, like it, bro, you get the, you get the, the eyebrows in that. Do you know? So in secondary school, did you did you guys sing hymns in, in assembly? 
No, in primary school I did. In primary so school it, we... So in our secondary school, we used to sing hymns. And yeah. obviously I, I got saved when I was in year nine, year 10. So I used to yeah. muck about in assembly before, like, like mm. when people when the, when we used to pray in, in school and they say amen, I go ah, oh, like I take the mick out of what oh, I I'd, I'd really like just treat it a certain way. I got saved. Mm. You see me in assembly now. I'm worshiping. I have got my hands up. <laughs> I'm, I'm praising the Lord in school. Man, man singing uh, them old school yeah. hymns, just like yes, 100%, yes, man. Lord. All things bright, yes, Lord, you are glorious. <laughs> so honestly, man, that's what that's what the world needs. Like the reason why some people don't get asked questions about their faith is because they live like everyone else. When you are different, mm. people ask you, "Well, why, why are you like that?" And that's where conversations of yeah of of, of Jesus can come into 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 place, you know. So, but yeah, I'm very grateful for the early days. I had some good people. My sister, I must have mentioned her. She was like my spiritual mother. Mm. I never forget she got me memorizing scriptures. I was accountable to her. She she was her name's Tara. She was unbelievable. She she was one of my first probably spiritual mentors. She was awesome. Yeah, that, that's amazing. It's great that then you have family that can do that as well. Because um, I've I've come from a household as well that's not necessarily whole holy Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, but my dad got saved, and then through that, after that, after some times, I got saved. So I, I had at least I had my dad uh, in my own house um, who who supported and also was able to guide me through certain things and to be fair, i'm I, I consider myself very blessed the lord's blessed me because my mom and my sister they may not be christians by faith yeah. but they understand that this is something important and there's something more to it than just a phase and stuff so even through my uh growing up they supported me in my faith they would encourage me to go to church that would ask me why you go to church there you know what i mean so mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. would also encourage me in that and always support me in, in, in that as well so having that family around you and um spiritual family around you including the church and the community that you grow up in is very very important so um Agreed. yeah i'm thankful for for what i've what i've had as well uh but yeah the, this this road is an interesting walk because you, you end up in places that um you never would have imagined You've ended up in different kind of countries, um, France, Belgium, Turkey. Um, out of all the countries you've you've played football in, even Canada as well. Hold tight, Toronto. Mm-hmm. I love Toronto Hold so tight. much. Yeah. Um, out of all the countries you've body. been in and played for, uh, played in, sorry, which has been like your favourite place? Oh, well, that's such a tough question. I would say... I really... Belgium was special, you know. Mm. Belgium was because it's such an easy country to t- transition to for an Englishman because yeah. most people speak Dutch, Flemish, and they speak English. Um, France was unbelievable. Um, and I spent two, three years in Belgium and two and a half years in France. But mm. the one country that I, re- I really wish I could spend more time in was Turkey, man. Really? Oh, bro, what a country, man. Hey. <sighs> The fans, mm. the food, the stadium, the atmosphere, the football. There's no tax. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, come on now. <laughs> Let's just be honest. But honestly, like I was only there for four and a half, five months. I was playing for Bursa Sport. The stadium mm. was like a crocodile. If you Google it, the Bursa Sport. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that. I've arena. seen that. Yeah, it's dope. Hostile, bro. My first game, I signed on Thursday. I trained on mm. Friday. We had Besiktas on Saturday. I was starting in the game. And unfortunately, the year be- the year before, the Shiktas and Bursa Bursa Sport fans fans clashed, and oh, they all fans, just clashed. Yeah, two fans Ooh. actually died, bro. Um, so oh, this man. time they closed the Tim's Arena to only mm. Bursa Sport fans. So no Besiktas fans were there. Yeah, bro, it was a sellout. Crazy atmosphere, unbelievable. I had a good debut as well. I mean, we nearly won. We, we hey. drew, but it was um, Turkey is just different. I wish I could have spent more time. You never know in the future, but yeah. special place. Yeah, that's that's cool, man. I've been, um, I haven't been Turkey, I haven't been France either, or Belgium, but I have been, I have been Canada though. I've been Canada. Okay, I spent okay, a lot of time bro. in Canada. I love, I love Toronto. Um, I've actually got a, uh, I've got two Toronto FC shirts uh, actually because um, I loved, I loved it that much. Yeah, but yo, the, how how is the adjustment? Because a lot of footballers, I think. Obviously, they, they play all the way around the world sometimes, a lot in Europe, and sometimes go even further than that. Mm. And people don't sometimes understand the adjustment period that you have to go through, where it's the language yeah. barrier, the, the culture, the, the, just the, even the style of football that they play. 
That's it's a, it's a big barrier, and people always expect, oh, this guy cost fifty million. Why can't he just adapt to mm-hmm. whatever? So, what is it like adapting to a new place, new culture, new football, uh, new schedule, new language? What is that like, especially as an English English man? Uh, because we're not very we, we don't learn a lot of new languages in in school. So, yeah. what is that like? You know what? For me, I, I've always loved culture. So from young, I was watching like Brazil, trying to learn some Portuguese. If we, I'm I'm type of person, if I if I, if you're from somewhere different to me, I'll try and use one word I know in your language to try and connect. Yeah. So I'm quite open with that. And for me, my character it was quite easy to adapt, mm. challenging but easier than most. We had a player, Reese Healy, bless Reese. Yeah, he signed for Toulouse in France from MK Dons. Yeah, and uh, remember we're in France now. Yeah. And one week after he's training, he's thinking, John, this is it's not like England, is it? What is this? Da, 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 da. He's like, John, he said, do they say hola here? I said, <laughs> said Reese, that's Spanish, bro. Hola is hello in Spanish. Bonjour. He said, oh, mate. And he actually wanted to leave after the first week. But now he stayed there and he's just been sensational. He scored so many goals for Toulouse. But yeah. I think you have to be humble. I mean, wherever I've gone, I've tried to learn the language, um, make efforts. Mm. I made a lot of mistakes. But I think people, when they look at English people, they think, oh, you don't know any languages. Yeah. Everyone speaks English, you're lazy. But when they show you, when they see that you try to make an effort yeah. and understand their culture, it makes a big difference. I think for the football side, the culture is different. Um, the manager speaking in a foreign language, you have to quickly mm. grab what he wants. But when you're on the pitch, I think that's the, the only place mm. that's similar. You know, yeah. maybe the... Patterns of play might be different and the intensity might be different, but it's it's a grass field with 22 men on it and a referee and all chasing and trying to move the white thing yeah. into the net, you know. So that's I where think, all the language comes comes into. That's yeah, one I language. think the the fo- football is a language in itself because mm, for sure. I've I went to Morocco on the beach and I played football with some random Moroccan guys. Did you get Megs? No, no, nah, nah, like, very... they know how to put it through your legs. Oh, wait, listen, office, listen, bro. them, them, yeah. man, they were very techy. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> typical. Yo, if I can use PMP, I'm doing PMP, you know what I mean? Like, kickball, What's PMP? strength, uh, oh, pace course. and power. Yeah, <laughs> okay, got your pace and power. Got yeah, you, got yeah. You. So, I, if, if I can try and like buddy a guy or get run past the guy, I'll do that. But these guys are like, keep the ball one touch, two touch around you, and you're just like, yeah, I need to, I need to, I need to adjust this, but. Once you get used to it, you are just playing football with some guys, and you don't necessarily have to speak the same language. But yeah, you know, this like doing that one two, you know that you need to cover. You know you need to do all these things. So, mm-hmm. football is in, is in a language in itself, man, and it's, it's amazing how you can bring so many people together. And I think this is why your your platform is so good as well. But it's kind of like it's bringing people from around the world together, but then also giving them a chance to see God and and Jesus and and that is that is special in itself. Like that's probably the best message you could probably give anyone. Um, so yeah, yeah man, it's been it's an amazing, amazing thing that we're doing right here. Um, yo, there's so much, there's so much, there's so many questions I got to ask you, man. Because like Perfect. you've had a, a good career, you you you've got your 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 church that you're 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 planning. You got all these different things. I don't, know, I just want to keep going. <laughs> I, I I just want to keep. I just want to find out about so many different things. Ooh, what have we got here? Here we go. I've got this one. Okay, so your career is your career has been very. I, I I believe you as a footballer having just a career in football is just amazing. Um, so what's one of your highlights? What's one of the things you look back and you're like, rah, like that right there was was sick. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, it's tough when when your career starts so high, so young. Mm. And maybe you didn't achieve or haven't yet achieved the things that maybe you wanted to achieve. It's tough um, to a degree, but mm. there's been a lot of lows, but there's been some incredible highs. I think, I mean, starting at the beginning, I mean, being the youngest player ever to play for Palace, that's my, mm. my, my club. That will always be a highlight. I mean, I was the youngest player to play for Spurs for, what, 11 years? Yeah. 12 years, maybe. And then nice. D- D- Dean Scar- Dane Scarlett. Dane Scarlett, yeah, 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 yeah. He brought the record. Um, and you're and still the youngest player for, for Crystal Palace as well. Palace, still yeah, I, I don't think that one will get broke for a while just because Palace are a big Premier League club now. And 15, yeah. it's hard for 15-year-olds to get a chance in the first team. Mm. But um, 
Yeah, those two are massive. But I think obviously playing for England schoolboys, but I think probably one of the you know what, bro? I think individually as an accolade, winning um winning the the league league de in France, winning that award on national TV, you know, standing next to the likes of Cavani and mm. and actually winning that and actually being able to say like God gets the glory for this, you know, mm. um was massive because my wife was there that night in Paris at the UFMP Awards. Mm. I didn't know I was going to win it. It was like a lot of good candidates. And that league has produced some incredible players, Kante, Mares. And so to win it, yeah. win it and my, after my first year in France was incredible. I think bigger than all those accolades, my biggest achievement and highlight is, is being an instrument for God's glory, bro. If I'm honest mm. with you. Because there'll always be a, a player better than me. Always yeah. being a player richer than me and uh, with more goals, more assists, more trophies. But when you hear people say stuff like, I wouldn't have known Jesus if it wasn't for ballers in God, or I, mm. my whole destiny's changed because now I know who I am in Christ. Those things, which don't, are never put in the newspaper, but are engraved on people's hearts, that for me is like winning Ballon d'Or. Yeah. So, um, there will be more highlights to come on the pitch, but there's also highlights mm. off the pitch that football has brought me through ballers in God and through through Christ that mm. it's immeasurable. Yeah, and I said going off off of that, like what what's some of the God highlights that you you have in football, uh, mm. whether it's on the pitch, off the pitch? You're like, do you have any do you have any distinct memories of God just being there with you in that moment and being like, boom, like let's do this job? And besides, obviously creating. Uh, boys yeah. and garden and stuff like that I, th I think what i mentioned earlier when god literally gave me like a a revelation like when i was gonna give up he said now you're ready do it for me that was like a massive catalyst but there's been so many testimonies i'll give you one mm -hmm. i was at lons i was playing uh at home 30 000 fans got a penalty first half dinked it penenka one nil Ooh, yeah, second on half made a run uh, pass the, the 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 back the back line, whipped it bottom corner two 0 Twenty minutes to go now. Mm. We get another penalty, and I'm the penalty taker by the way, KJ. Yeah. Yeah. My teammate Zubir starts fighting me for the ball, <laughs> and I'm like, nah, he ain't he ain't taking this penalty. It's my I've never scored a hat trick before. Yeah. This is giving me my first glorified. I want to take the ball home. Give me the ball. Yeah. So he's fighting me for the ball and the Holy Spirit's saying, give it to him. I'm like, no. I said, no, Lord. <laughs> and by the time, like, this is starting to look a little bit weird now because we're fighting for the pitch. I don't like the way that looks on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then um, the Holy Spirit said, John, give him the ball. I was like, oh, all right, bro, take it. Mm. And it was tough. You know, when you give someone to something, you try to put it Yeah, you sort of like, hold it. Take it. So anyway, by the time I gave it to him, I had peace. I wish, I mm. hope he scored it took the penalty he missed it yeah we won the game mm. and I scored two goals great and I thought mm. that was the end of it fast forward a week later I get a letter in the post from someone the letter's like it says hello John my name's Derek um I speak English I'm living in Lons I'm mm. a Christian I'm a, mi um, a missionary out here with my family he said I never come to I don't often come to the games at Lons but I came mm. and I watched you play um and I was so amazed as to why would you give up the penalty? You're going to score a hat trick. Mm. And I didn't know who you were. And that intrigued me. I Googled your name. I saw you're a fellow brother in Christ. And I just wanted to let you know that we're here for you as a family. Um, we want to help you to find a church here and, you know, mm. get, uh, just help you in your, you know, your journey in Lons. Bro, I went to go meet Derek and his family. Derek and his family have now become lifelong friends for us. They helped us in France. Wow. They were a blessing to us. And that for me was like, I could have got the hat trick, like, and the whole, mm. and I got the stat. But because I trusted the Holy Spirit, I've now got a lifelong friend who prays for my mm. family, who helped me in Lons, and I've been a blessing to him as well. So that there was like one of the moments where God actually spoke to me on the pitch and I actually experienced answered prayer and blessing yeah. from look like losing. Do you get, do you get yeah, that? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And, and, and if you look at it, like, what, what's more valuable? Uh, a, a, a match ball? Because you got a hat trick, bro, or the like a lifelong friend, like it's it's, it's amazing how God works like that. And especially this when a, this guy's a blessing as well, mm -hmm. honestly. So there's that moment, and whatever. But there's been there's been a lot, man. I think a God moment as well. I remember I was at Nottingham Forest, which was a massive answer to prayer. 
mm. because my family was going through a bit of a tough time in France and we needed to be back in England. Mm. And my wife said, because we needed to go back to John, we need to go back to England. Either I go back with, my, with our son or we all go back. I said, Lord, there's no way me and my family can be divided. Mm. So I need a club in England now. I've been faithful. You have to give me a club in England. Mm. The next night, my wife had a dream. I was going to sign for a team in, in red. I was holding up a red shirt. Oh, and man. my wife's dreams. When my wife dreams, you have yeah. to listen because the Lord speaks to her every dream. Three days after KJ, Aberdeen called me from Scotland. Tried to, mm. do, a little, tried to do a loan. Deal fell through. Two days after, Charlton called me. Red, another red kit. Deal yeah. fell through. I'm like, Lord, is this some sort of joke? <laughs> The last day of the transfer window, Nottingham Forest called me, another red shirt. I signed for them on loan. So we came back to Forest and it was such a blessing off the pitch. On the pitch, mm. I didn't play so much, but I met one player who came to Ballers and God through Nottingham Forest. And he said to me, he said, John, if I didn't meet you when I met you, I would have, I would have quit football. Wow. I would have quit football. I had lost hope. But now God's restored so much strength and, and, and purpose mm. to me through ballers and God and just through meeting you. And so when he said that, I was like, this is my reason, man. Of mm. course I want to achieve in football, but that is a highlight. You can't put a yeah. price on that. So yeah, bro, that's that, that's that's one of the massive God yeah, highlights in that, football as well. That's amazing. Man. You see, I, the fact that it was like, it was three, it was three as well. It wasn't just like on the first go, like, yeah, boom, there's, there's your team in red. Three tries and all three were red Red shirts, teams with red shirts as the home kits. And now I'm playing for another, another red kit as well, Doncaster. Yeah, Doncaster, they've got the red and white, the hoops and that, you know what I'm there saying? Go, like, Could be Athletic yeah, Madrid the... next, man. Lord, Athletic please. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please. That would be sick. Oh, yeah, that's amazing, bro. That's amazing. And yeah, we'll come back to more of like faith and more of guarding in your life. But I just mm-hmm. wanted to ask you, uh, I want to go back to the Wonder Kid comment. So any of you watching right now, if you played FIFA 12, FIFA 13, FIFA 14, you know who you should have signed in the career mode? John Bostock, you know what I mean? I remember doing career mode. I actually signed you multiple times, actually. Um, and I, it's mad that I'm speaking to you right now, knowing that I, I used to play with you on FIFA. But FIFA's come a long way since then. Uh, mm-hmm. you've, got, you've, got, uh, you've got Ultimate Team. Oh you know about Ultimate Team, right, John? Trust me, yeah, I, I can't lie. I've got my own team on the Ultimate Team. Hey, come on now. We'd love to see it. And I just want to say, I do have your Ultimate key Team card right here with me right now. I'm going to whack it on screen. There is your Ultimate Team card, John. Now, 67 silver. Non-rare as well, FIFA 22. Now, my question is, John, do you think you've been done dirty there? Absolutely. You know what? <laughs> I really get annoyed when players say, yeah, I should have faster pace rating, da 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 But literally, that's... Yeah. EA, we need to have a chat. Guys, can we just pray for EA? Go EA in. needs some... <laughs> you know what? To be fair, I mean, I mean, I mean, some of it, I mean, I still got the special flair trait and long shooting yeah. trait. I've checked that. There's some good bits and bobs. The pace thing... Um, my game's not based on pace but 59 is a bit of a disrespect some other attributes there a bit of a disrespect however when I play ultimate team I do always purchase John Bostock and he's hey. on the bench he doesn't start but when I'm winning <laughs> 3 or 4-0 he comes on and he's nice to use he's got yeah. good technique so yeah I'll take that I'll take that right, nice nice did you know you can actually get uh, if you contact EA I don't know how to do it but you can get a pro card so they will God, give you that. a card had that if- bro you had you had the ninety nine so, John Bosler. So, so players, we used to have this thing where you could contact EA and they'll give mm. you four legend. Uh, I'm sorry, one icon, yeah, three cards of your choice, and your own pro player card. Yeah, pro player card. Yeah. So I I had the ninety nine Bostock. Every stat was ninety nine. I hey. had, who's that up top? I had Pele up top. I chose Ka- Kante team of the year. Who else? Uh, Kante David de Gea team of the year. This is a couple years ago. Yeah. And one more. So yeah, my team was just basically a joke. I yo, felt like I was that's, cheating. That's mad. Yo, can you do me a favor? Can can you use my say my account is your account 
and get the John Bostock card. Bro, you know what? Honestly, like not a lot of people know this, but EA stopped doing that for a lot of people because oh, really? some of the EA people who were working for EA started selling and making money off of. Oh, uh, yeah. There's a, big, there's a big scandal about that with yeah, icons scandal. as well. Like they used that's to do it. with icons too. So, yeah, that's crazy, man. Like, like, I wish I had a pro card in FIFA. Um, I would be a striker. Um, if you was on FIFA, what would be your best stat? Ah, pay, it would be pace. It would be pace. Are you quick, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, well, I'm not saying you... I'm like rapid, <laughs> rapid. But what would you give yourself out of 100 then? Like, what? what where are we going? With oh, this? okay. What? Well, okay, okay. Are we doing like if we're doing by realistic standards, I'll be like a 30, 29 rated player. Okay. But if we do, if we're doing it by like. If I was a pro player, I would be so good. I reckon if I got to if I got to 85, if I got to an 85 rate car, I, 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 I would be I, I, I'm happy with that. 85, 85 rate striker. Well, it's people 80. like Adama Traore and Mbappe, they make everyone look slow, bro. But 85 <laughs> solid. That's sure. Oh yeah. Oh 85, 85 is solid, man. If I had 85, um with like 88 pace, maybe 80 shooting, passing can be low. I'm not I'm not like a I'm not a, like I'm not like you, you can spray. The thing like that, I try, but yeah, it don't work out. Um, oh. Defending can be low, physical, eighty physical, dribbling, around seventy five. I, I could, I could deal with that. You know what I mean? I think oh, I can do it. Um, talking about ultimate team though, picking teams. Quick one, five aside. Mm-hmm. Any player you want from any any era, Oof. your five aside. John Bostock's five aside. Oh my gosh! So, keeper and four players, yeah. Yeah, keeper and four players. Oof. Um, so keeper, I'm going. Who's techie? Just techie little keeper. Casillas would do good, but I don't really. Maybe, um, you know, you know, how I'll go for all time keeper. I mean, I think Noya is possibly the best keeper ever, but I yeah. might go for um, Edison, you know. Oh, yeah, I was literally thinking the same thing, Edison. He's, yeah, cool. he's, I have a thing about Edison, he's not a goalkeeper. He is a midfielder who just happens to play in nets. That's he's Rodri. He he's Rodri in goal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, he's legit. <laughs> legit. No, I think I think in a five aside team, he could doesn't he use his hands a lot with his feet with each other, and he could shoot from any anywhere mm. on my five aside team because he's, he's, he's kicking and shoot and then just his techniques a joke. So I'm going Edison in net. Um I'm going one, two, one. I'm going one, two, one, I think. Yeah. Uh I'm putting at the back. Technical defender I can think of. Do I even need to pick a defender? I don't even need a defender. Yeah, you don't even back, need a defender. I'm putting Marco Verratti at the back. Ooh, okay, I see you. I see you. Because five aside would be tremendous. Mm. Um, in midfield, it's all time actually. Is he getting them all time, Marco? Ver- yeah, because he's he's he rats as well. Mm. He'd be like a perfect defender in that. Yeah, and wonderful ball player. I'm putting Thiago, um, so Verratti at the back. I'm putting Thiago Alcantara. Ooh. Am I really? Yeah, I'm putting Thiago Alcantara yeah. and Raquel May. Ooh, nice, nice, and nice. And I'm nice, putting nice. Um, Ronaldinho up top. I like that. That's yeah, the team. I, I, I've missed out R9, Messi. Yeah, I, I know. But I'm just picking a team that I can get some popcorn and just do this. Yeah, yeah, just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Adel Tarap's on the bench. Oh, it. Did would you were you there when he was there? Yeah, I played with Adele. Yeah. Yo, how how sick is he? Like just in just in tech, just tech, just everything, bro. Man, it was so him, so in the reserves we had him and it was um Kevin Prince Boateng at the time. And they mm. were really kind of their head was gone that they weren't in the first team playing. So yeah. they weren't there mentally, to be honest with you. Both have had incredible careers. But Adele, mm. when he was at Spurs, he used to do something. I remember I played a reserve game with him away at Middlesbrough. And it was raining, bro. And we gave him the ball, like fast. He's like playing number ten position, and he took the ball for about thirty seconds and went around everyone. And everyone kept, but he came back. He just kept doing all these tricks. He lost the ball, sat down on the floor like this, took his gloves off and threw them at his. And the manager, Clive Allen, went, "Adele, get up!" He went, and his head was just. He just wasn't there. It didn't click for yeah. him. Like he used to try nutmegs in the wrong position. He was unbelievable talent. I think when he went to QPR, then he went mm. and smashed it. And then, I mean, now, have you seen him play now? Yeah, Benfica. Oi. He's playing holding midfield, playing simple, breaking down play. So, incredible talent, bro. 
Yeah, it, that's what shows what happens with maturity and uh, an age. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, it goes up. But yeah, um, la- your shirt number. Okay. Fifteen. Is that a number you've had all like most of your career? Is it always the one you always pick? So now, yes, because mm. there's meaning. There's a meaning behind the number. Okay. Um, so growing up, my favorite number probably was eight or ten. I used, mm-hmm. I used to be a more offensive player when I was younger. So 10 was yep. the number or eight. And now I play holding midfield. But I think 15, the number 15 found me, man. Um, the reason that number 15 is my favourite number is because I was born on the 15th of January. Mm-hmm. I became a Christian when I was 15. Ballers and God started in 2015. Mm-hmm. My son was born in 2015. And John chapter 15, my favourite chapter in the Bible. So it's loaded. The number's loaded. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's a loaded number for me. So without saying, if that number becomes available at a club, snap yeah. it up. When did you start? When you start doing that, was that literally 2015? You started using that as well, or was it? Like yeah, a few years yeah after? it actually was. <laughs> wow, it actually was. We love in 2015. Yeah, yeah, my son was born. Yeah, 2015. That's so crazy. There you go. Yeah, mad like number. I, I'm a football. I'm a football stickler when it comes to numbers. I I don't know why. Yeah, but I just love shirt numbers. I love yeah. like the positions that they're me, and I just love why players pick certain numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a 10 man myself. 10 a joke. Um, just, lo- just love the number. Rudran Nesteroy is one of my favourite Man United players. He he wore Was he 10? Was he 10? Was he not number 9 at United? Yeah, he was 10. He was 10 at was United. 10? Um, number 9 at that time. Who was number 9 at that time? He, I think it was Lou Saha. It was Lou yeah, Saha. Saha. Yeah. yeah, he had number 9. But 10, he had like, obviously got the Rooney. Uh, he wore 10. Uh, Marcus Rashford, I know he's going for a tough time right now, but like he's one of my favorite players at United. He wears the ten, so ten for me is just a number that I always, uh, I've always enjoyed. I wore that when I used to play at Sunday League. That's the highest I ever got. That's the highest I ever got. Sunday League and seven aside, five aside is is my back. You know what I mean? That's where, that's where go, I belong. But, but yeah, I've always been a number ten guy. But yeah, um, I think it's the best number. 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 Yeah, it's hundred percent. Ten seven. And I don't know why I've got. I like eighteen. I don't know why. It's something about what, eighteen. Scolds? Yeah, skulls. Oh, Bruno Fernandez. That's why. But about nah, you, nah, 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 nah. I think you know what it is. I think you know what it is. I think it's because it's the closest thing I can get to ten if I don't have ten. Like because eight and zero, it's like almost there. The shape's almost there. I think that's what it is. But eight. Okay, I, yeah, I, okay. I don't mind me some eighteen. Um, but yeah, we're coming up towards the end uh, of the podcast, you know what I mean? Um, guys, I hope you've been enjoying it. And I think this question right here, um, I think is, is excellent to end on because it, it, it draws from you now. Um, and that's what advice would you give, first of all, to young footballers who are Christian within the game? And then what advice would you just give to Christians in general, uh, walking their faith, uh, walking in their faith in their life? I think that the majority of our problems and issues in life come from us being distant from Jesus. I think when we know him, everything else falls into place. So my number one advice to everyone Mm. in the game, outside the game, is to really know Jesus. A lot of players who join ballers in God, their testimony is, yeah, I was raised in church, my mom and dad are Christians, but I'm just trying to find my way, really. I'm not really... And they, there's a long in there. They want to know Jesus for themselves. So my number one advice, mm-hmm. if you, I believe every person listening to this has a destiny. Like God's created you on purpose, for purpose. And your destiny is wrapped up in Jesus. So the further you get away from him, the further you get away from the reason you were made, the more you know him, the more your destiny and the things that you were called to do become unraveled. So mm-hmm. it's simple. Know Jesus. Make him your number one goal. Make him your number one pursuit. Um, not religion, not rules and regulations, knowing him because he is the most unbelievable truth ever mm. to behold. So um, that's my life advice for anyone listening to this. Um, Jesus really is worthy of, of knowing um, and, it, and your life depends on it. Your destiny depends on it. When it comes to football, um, any young Christian footballer, I would say... Um, of course, know Jesus, but like, don't substitute hard work for prayer. Like, you have to grind, man. Like, mm. You have to. Like the Bible says, "Faith without deeds is dead." And maybe some people are praying for breakthrough, praying for. But you have, you have to literally, you have to. The Bible says, you, 
a man reaps what he sows. So you have to mm. look at Ronaldo. I'm sorry, but he's probably the most perfect example of a man who's actually reaped for the rewards of a biblical law. That guy mm. has sown more than any player. Mm. That, therefore, he's now reaped more than any player. So, mm. of course, trust God, but also marry those things with hard work. Yeah. Like hone your craft. Um, and just with that, with young footballers, I encourage you, don't do it alone. Like sometimes I've been the only been there when I'm the only Christian in my team and I can feel like I'm the odd one out. There's a community here in Ballers in God um, for any young player who's a pro or semi-pro. We'd love to get behind you. There's other players running the same journey as you. Um, no man's an island, you know. And so, um, yeah, get get around people running the same race. That's my advice. Yeah. Anyone listen to this. Oh, thank you so much. And um, I've appreciated uh, this podcast, finding more about like your story and, and your career and everything. And I'm pretty sure there's so much more that um that we could have spoke about today uh but obviously we, we just with time um guys in the comment section uh i hope you guys really have enjoyed this we're looking forward to creating more me and john will be back um okay. with with some more guests more podcasts uh, more uh conversations so put your questions towards john uh towards any footballer that we bring on or any guests that we bring on put them in the comment section what do you want to find out about the life of a footballer who's also a christian tell us in the comment section and we will pick them out and we're sure we can we could talk about it discuss and, and and go through it um john thank you so much again for giving us your time um and, and sharing with us um parts of your life uh we you know what when it gets to like episode 50 59 or something you know what i mean we should do a john part two and we go we go into the other parts i'll be down uh, for that bro. Of, of, of the of your story of your career that we never really got to touch on today but uh thank you again um we're just going to end in prayer uh um just to just to close off the the first episode of the ballers and god podcast uh so yeah guys if you could join us in this uh that would be uh very much appreciated uh so uh, dear Lord, we just want to thank you for this time that we've had. I just want to, first of all, just lift you up and say that everything we do is for you. And without you, it, what does it mean, Lord? So we, we thank you for being with us all the time, every day of our lives, that you're always there and, and always supporting, always have our back. You are our biggest supporters. You are our biggest fans. So we just want to thank you for always being there and having your goodwill on our lives. I just want to thank you for John. I thank you for the career that you've given him. I thank you for the passion and the drive you've given him to um, not only pursue football, but also pursue football for you to connect right. many different footballers together for your for your plan and your purpose, Lord. So I thank you for John's heart, his humility, his, uh, his servitude uh, towards you. And I pray that as we as we continue to grow, as we continue to to expand everything that, that Ballers and God is doing, that you continue to touch many people's lives. You use Ballers and God, you use John as a platform to, to reach people who may even never have thought about you in their lives until reaching this, this platform, until reaching this moment where they see their favourite sport, some of their favourite players speak about the thing that drives them forward, the, the person who makes them who they are and that's you jesus christ so we thank you so much and everyone who's watching the podcast i just pray over their lives i pray that they they are blessed i pray that any kind of situation anything they're going through that that you just intervene lord that you just come in help them show them the way show them your love give them your grace and they're able to look up and look up with hope look up with with enjoyment look up with joy for towards the future with you and i pray that there are many many more Ballers and God podcast to come. We have many more guests and we have more great moments where you are at the center and we really and truly reflect who you are. Um, mm. Thank you so much for everything you've done today. And um, and yeah, oh, onwards and upwards. Uh, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. awesome. Brilliant. So guys, hope you enjoyed today. Episode one, we're checking.